Okay, so in the, this uh, video we're going to think about another situation where we're calculating an E field, an electric field, um, due to some uniform charge distribution, some continuous charge distribution. So what I want to imagine is I've got this semicircle. This is supposed to be a semicircle. Um, and this semicircle is a, a uniformly charged semicircle. So there's a you know, constant charge distribution, even charge distribution. And what I'd be curious of, to, to figure out, see if we can calculate, is what is the electric field at the very center of this semicircle? So this is supposed to be the center. In other words, this point is some distance r away from, from our charged semicircle. So um, we're going to sort of approach this in the same way we did before, which is to go ahead, well, uh, actually, before I even before I even go ahead and, and, and start to do the math, let's let's just recognize what it means to say that this is uniform charge distribution. So, uh, let's say that we've got some some uh, charge density lambda, and that's going to be the amount of charge in Coulomb's Q divided by this length here, which is um, since it's a semicircle, it's not two pi r; it's just pi r, right? Half of a circle. A circle. Well, this distance would be if it were a full circle, 2 pi r, but this is just pi r. And so I can say that, I can rearrange this and say q equals lambda times pi r. So that's a, a way of expressing the q. So we'll come back to that in a minute. Um, so I'm going to approach this the same way I approached the, um, the charged ring. I'm going to cut this into little, little elements dq, or here we get some little element. Uh, and I'm gonna, that's gonna, that little element is going to have a charge dq. And um, the way to think about this in terms of the circle, the way to think about this, if I can see if I can draw this reasonably well, the way to think about this is if I've got, if I draw a radius to my point, my, my center here, here's this radius r. And if I were to draw another one from here, then this subtends this, this little arc length subtends this angle right here, this tiny angle, which this is some infinitesimally tiny angle d theta. So we've got this little element here that's got a charge dq subtended by this little angle d theta. And so um, in, in terms of the, the math here, I'm not talking about, I'm, I'm not interested in the total charge q, I'm just interested in the little charge dq. I'll stick with blue, I guess dq, and dq is going to be equal to lambda, that charge density, times what? Well, this, uh, I can't, I can no longer say pi times r, this is just going to be r times this little angle d theta. So this r times d theta, that's a way of expressing this tiny arc length um, that's, that that exists that, that carries the charge dq. So dq is equal to the distribution times the length, which is the radius, times this tiny amount of, of angle, this little tiny d theta. Now, um, what we can what we can do right away here is go ahead and plug this in. We can do another substitution, plug this in for lambda, and now we can simplify this and say that dq is going to be equal to q over pi r times r d theta. In other words, we can call this um, q over pi d theta. So we lost an r when I put this in here. This r canceled with that r, and the r's go away. We get dq equals q over pi d theta. Um, this, of course, is a constant, right? The q is some value, and and and, and pi is just pi. Um, all right, so let's let's get into thinking about the um, the electric field here. Well, as we did before, we can note we can go ahead and note that there's going to be some electric field. Let's imagine that this charge is this this ring is all positively charged. So there's going to be some electric field uh, due to dq that's going to be out this way. That's dE. And as we noted in the last problem, due to symmetry, we can ignore the left-right nature. In other words, we can ignore the component of DE that's acting this way. Because this little DQ 
is going to contribute a horizontal component pushing to the right, but there's going to be some other element, dq over here, that's going to have an equal de component pointing to the left. So we can ignore that horizontal component entirely um, and only worry about this component, which is going to be equal to de, in this case, de sine theta, right? Because uh, this angle right here is going to be equivalent. The angle theta is going to be equal to this angle. This is theta. So this is de sine theta. And so now I can go ahead and start to, to think a little bit about the math that we're going to have to do. So let's go ahead. Uh, maybe I'll, I'll start over here. And we can recognize just starting with our old equation for, for the electric field, we can say de, this is 1 over 4 pi epsilon 0 times what? Well, dq over r squared. So that's just, that follows directly from our equation for the electric field. Um, uh, now, I don't want to have this dq in here. I, I'd like to have d theta in, so I'm going to work now a substitution saying that dq is equal to this, because this is all in terms of this angle theta here, right? We're thinking about a circle. So I'm going to transform this into 1 over 4 pi epsilon 0 times, well, now instead of dq, I've got this whole mess over here. So what's that going to be? Well, that's going to be q d theta over pi r squared. Again, where this is, this r is this r right here. Maybe I should, I called it capital R. So maybe I should go back and just make sure that we understand that these are capital R squared. So I have a pi here and a pi there. That's going to give me a pi squared. And so I could just go ahead now and simplify this. If I can carry this on down here, I can say 1. I can say, well, I'm going to just say q d theta, just multiplying the numerators, over 4 pi squared epsilon 0 r squared. Um, now, that's, so that's an expression for de. But remember, the, by, by symmetry, we're not interested in de. We're interested in de sine theta. So let's go ahead and see if we can come up. I'm going to continue over here, an expression of, for de sine theta. So this is going to be de sine theta is simply this whole thing times sine theta. So q d theta divided by 4 pi squared epsilon 0 r squared times sine theta. And now, um, if we're interested in the electric field at the center, I have to integrate all of these little elements uh, d theta. And so now what I'm going to say is the electric field at the center is just going to be the integral of this. So it's going to be the integral. And, and we have to be careful. What are we taking the integral from? Well, it's a semicircle. So we're going to take the integral from 0 to pi, whereas we're not going to go um, from 0 to pi. Since it's not a full circle, I don't have to go 2 pi. I can just go pi. And it's going to be the integral from 0 to pi of q sine theta over 4 pi squared epsilon 0 r squared d theta. So I just kind of I moved these around. I hope that wasn't too confusing that I swip, uh, swapped those around. All right, so what is this? Well, most of this stuff is just a constant, right? Q is a constant. This is a constant. 4 pi is a constant. Epsilon 0 is a constant. R is a constant. And so I can just pull all of that out front, and I'm going to get that this is going to be equal to Q over 4 pi squared epsilon 0 R squared times the integral from 0 to pi of sine theta d theta. Well, what's the integral of sine theta? Well, it's negative cosine theta. And I'm going to evaluate that from 0 to pi. And then what am I going to get? Well, here we're almost done. So e at the center. It's this whole constant. Let me write that again. Q over 4 pi squared epsilon 0 r squared 
times. Now what is this? Well it's going to be negative cosine pi plus the cosine of zero. Now what is this? Well cosine pi, negative cosine pi, this is just going to give us plus cosine of zero. This is this whole thing is just going to equal two. Right? This is zero. This is oh this is one. This is one. And so I get two. So this is two. I get a two up up this two is going to go up top. And so what do I end up with here? I end up with the center is two q over four pi squared epsilon zero r squared and two is going to go away and I'm, this becomes a two and then I get my final result which is equal to q over two pi squared epsilon zero r squared and that's my final equation And again, the, 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 it's not essential that you memorize by any means that you memorize this particular equation for this peculiar charge distribution. But hopefully you, you can follow the steps so that if you're given some kind of a symmetric um, uh, charge configuration, you can sort of reason it through using the, the, the types of um, logic that I used in both in this video uh, and in our previous video. Um, okay, so that's all for now. And um, actually, that's going to conclude for us uh, our videos relating to chapter 22.